fucking cunt. Uh, my muscle connection through pressing is a skill which will get you a massive chest regardless of your genetics. Let me explain. Flies, cable press, uh, cable flies, pec deck, the optimal stuff, I get it. Um, my muscle connection is equally as important as heavy pressing. However, you guys got to realize the bread and butter movements are how you grow. The body weight stuff is how you grow. Those are natural movements which you can't go wrong. They're unbeatable. You might have a bad set on flies. But when you're doing push-ups and weighted push-ups, as long as you've warmed up properly, regardless of my muscle connection or not, your chest is working. You don't get to decide if your chest is working or not. That's a human thing. If you go to scratch your back, look at that activation, your pec activates. You don't get to decide that because that's how the body works. I'm gonna target all parts. So I'd like to do, I like to pre-exhaust my presses so I can get really good mind-muscle connection through my presses. And I'm just gonna give you a tip before I uh, explain what I was about to say is if you're bench pressing for maximum strength gains, you can skip this part. But if you want to bench and get, if you want to get big pecs through bench pressing or just dumbbell pressing, press through this bit of your palm. That's what I found. And you're doing this. That, it, it's crazy. You see what, I don't need to sit here and explain myself. You see, I like to do an incline fly and then an incline press. And then I'll do a flat fly and then a flat press. So dumbbell flies, pec deck, all of this stuff, you've got to be really careful because it does not equate to the strength you have in pressing. When I was 17 years old, I was pressing 60 kilo dumbbells, okay, flat. Um, so I would do my dumbbell flies with maximum, the heaviest I ever went, heaviest I ever went personally was 38 kilos for a set of 10 reps. And then my mate helped me get another eight reps. Um, now people would come up to me going, is that how you get a big chest? heavy dumbbell flies he said no again strength is relevant yes 38 kilos is really heavy to fly on dumbbells for anyone let's be real i'm not going to be around the bush here you might call me cocky but that's the truth but i was also pressing almost double that so of course i can fly half of my press that's how i like to kind of see it now that's might be bro maths that might not be optimal enough for you guys but personally suck your mum. the reason i fly before my presses is because i know I'm targeting my pecs over other things. People press like idiots nowadays. You guys will press like full, full, full fucking fetus position. You're meant to have your, um, your shoulder blades pinned to the bench. You're meant to be squeezing up. But then also people take that out of context and go, yeah, I'm, I'm bench pressing for muscle building. And then they'll take up our whole powerlifting bench stance. Let's talk rep ranges next. So... I max out on stuff all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm like the guiltiest guy on the internet of that. Um, you think Larry Wills and that are bad, bro? I'd be, I'll be maxing out on stuff like T-Bar, bro. Not even accidentally either. I just, I just feel like it, and I'll just go for it. It's really annoying that one strain of hair, mate. <laughs> Stop going into my mouth. But practice all rep ranges. So I'm not a really big fan of going like five reps on flies, but I would personally go. You can go five reps on your presses. Why not? You'll get um, you'll get muscle from that. So uh, it might not be smart personally to do. Um, you need to realize your body can't actually handle heavy weight in relevance uh, to your pressing on your fly position because that is a vulnerable position for like pretty much every joint around your pec to be in right that is very weak so challenge yourself on weight for the rep range but keep the rep range high in my opinion um i mean i've done set i've accidentally done sets of six to eight reps on dumbbell flies because i've overshot but as long as you warm up that's fine but the point is i still was aiming for 12 reps on that weight or 10 reps on that weight so i've never had a problem I see these people go way too heavy. Um, they watch a few of my videos. They copy some of my workouts and they'll go, yeah, I'm going to go do low rep, heavyweight dumbbell flies. Um, and then you get injured. And it's like, when did I ever say to, when did I, when did I ever say to do that, bro? When did I ever say to do that, bro? I don't get it. I don't know why you, I don't understand your logic behind that. Shit. Some of you don't think and then you injure yourself and then you want to blame it on someone else's ideology you're just you're just idiots you deserve to be injured if that's how you what you're going to do in the gym sorry anyway summing up what i'm trying to say is as long as you're doing the bread and butter movements um rep ranges can vary you're going to build muscle out of three solid big full stretch full squeeze reps you're going to build uh muscle through three solid 
pumping reps where you're not doing a full range of motion but you're just doing that uh, as long as you're doing it correctly with my muscle connection you can i'm i'm actually a believer you can build muscle through one blimmin rep mate uh, as long as you have good mind muscle connection but you need to learn that and that's a skill which you only get over time but i said that you want to target all parts right you got your incline you got your flat i don't trade it to decline in my <laughs> it doesn't work for me it might work for you so don't say don't not try in decline sorry because i say it doesn't work for me i haven't seen it work personally on anyone but you might be a genetic anomaly who get can get a crazy massive chest from decline flies and decline dumbbell press and decline bench press so why not try it um it's never worked for me though so i don't do it therefore my chest regime usually looks like my upper chest isolation so a fly my upper chest bread and butter which is um think of that think of your presses like the bro split the bro exercise the chad the, the chad part of the session do a flat press and then a flat fly or usually i do my flat fly before my flat press but again if i want to push weight if i want to show off on the instagram i will start with incline pressing first or i'll start with a flat pressing i regulate it every single roll they exercise around all the time um but i have a faint idea of discipline um so i don't really do it anymore but there's nothing wrong with wanting to do your bread and butter before your isolation the reason why I like to do my isolation first means that I've already pre-exhausted my pecs. So yes, I might not be able to go as heavy, um, but it means uh, it means I can't I can't miss. Um, so the clips I've been using in this basically um, so far these are my favorite. This is my favorite um, incline chest machine. Full stop. And I do not use machines for chest, uh, but this is an incline plate loaded press. I usually do my pec deck before it, but I'll do my pec deck slightly sitting back. So I'm up here. I, I or if I, if the pec deck in the gym I'm using doesn't really allow me to do that, I'll just do incline flies with dumbbells. Um, I'm not saying five plates aside is light. It is very heavy. I have not seen anyone. I, I've seen pro bodybuilders do this weight, um, but I'm a teenager and I'm natural. I'm a lifetime natural. So that's... I'm not so that's putting into perspective that I'm not I'm not going light on this. This is heavy. This is stuff professional bodybuilders hardly touch. And that's not me saying I'm better than professional bodybuilders obviously. I'm just saying that I want to put it into perspective that I'm fucking strong um because I do these sets after my pre-exhaustion. Now, um this set was pre-exhausted by um heavy bench negatives which is basically where your mate is holding the bar for you. He lets you control the weight down, but it's a weight that you would never be able to press in your life and then he takes it for you. I've worked up to like so much weight on this um, and it's good, but it's how you tear a pec. So you need to really warm up, which is my kind of final point is use your bands. Uh, lots of the, lots of round the worlds, which is where you get the band, you stretch it out and you're putting it over your head putting it back over, putting it back on your head, back over, uh, lots of, just just please warm up as much as you can, because then you can do a 45 minute session where you're just going balls to the walls, pressing all the weight in the world, you're flying all these big heavy dumbbells for 12 reps, and you're just, oh, oh my muscle connection's on point, and you won't get injured. Um, freak injuries happen, I've done a rep too low, uh, accidentally on dumbbell flies or incline flies, on pec deck where i've just stretched a tiny bit too much and my shoulders taken over and then my shoulder which wasn't warmed up um wouldn't have been able to handle the weight because as i said i've been doing flies for a long time so yes my pectorals as much as they might not be uh, strong in that position can still shift a fair amount of weight because they're strong pecs um but again nothing compared to what i'd be able to press use my pecs sorry if i was in this pressing position um, you just you need to know yourself last but not least body weight stuff is unbeaten you're never going to be able to as i said earlier on in the video you just bro just do it like press ups weighted press ups weighted dips um it's how you target this one bit in your chest which i explained in one of my chest days recently it's not a dip it's where you're not doing this when you're doing your tricep dips um but your arms fully extended and you're letting yourself go down 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 here and then you're pressing up like that and basically the idea is your arm goes like this and see how it's i'm going like that you just quickly whilst you're sitting watching this or standing 
if you just move your arm across your body like across your body like this that activates your pec um it's the same idea but you don't want to be doing that those people who get dumbbells or a plate and do that for a workout they don't do that set they don't do that exercise okay they've never done that exercise um consistently because that does not get you big pecs that's bullshit on the tricep dip thing press up go down press up that's hitting that bit there um and put weight on it because you'll be able to do you're not doing a full tricep dip you're doing not even a half rep you're not even doing a quarter rep um you're doing like a contraction so you can add weight there in jail hopefully none of you can actually relate to what i'm talking about um a lot of the people that work out there, a lot of people that go to jail, the younger guys in their 20s and 30s, they have big pecs. They might not have big arms, big legs, uh, but they always have a big pecs and they always have big backs. But you can put your feet up on the bed or bunk bed, and do press ups from an in, uh, from a decline. So you're like, it, it's harder for you to do the press up. You've got more, um, it's, you're doing more of a pike press up. Um, you can. You can do a handstand against the wall and do pike press ups like that to really get crazy shoulder and upper chest gains. Usually a sink in a cell where you can hold and do press ups like that. So you're holding it like that because it's usually a small sink. So you're like do that movement, which is kind of almost like a fly. The pec um, grows pretty quickly because it's used in a lot of things. Like, you know, you go to scratch your back. Oh, using my pec. I want to do my hair because I'm, I'm like a little girl and I've got long hair. Or I'm putting my earrings in because I'm a femboy. Oh, using my pec. Pulling out a 12 gauge because a girl tried to talk to me in the gym. Oh, using my pec. Professional bodybuilders, they do press ups, they do dips, and they do pull ups. Most of them anyway. You can't really be a pro bodybuilder, like a respectable pro bodybuilder with a shit physique. When you press, it's very easy to just go blank up here and you're just ugga, 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 ugga. You're not using your pecs. You use your shoulders, pecs and triceps and neck and back and upper back and erectors. And then you hurt your back because you're arching too much. Then you're doing too much leg drive. So you, your quads don't recover in time for next leg day. <laughs> so if you're trying to build muscle through your chest um, through bench pressing, instead of doing that, what I just described, you want to take the weight down. You're going to have to, whether you like it or not. Well, but... But ego lifting is cool. Optimal lifting is gay. That's so gay. I'd never go light and do high reps. I'm not saying ego lifting is bad. I'm saying you're a femboy for not listening to pro bodybuilders, bro. You want to be a bodybuilder, but then you're going all like, no, I... <laughs> Younger lady, this is... Leave your ego at the door. And focus on the stretch and the squeeze as well as going heavy through the stretch and the squeeze. Then you'll get big pecs. Then you'll be like, oh, my pecs are growing because I went real heavy through like good form, isn't it? And I'll just sit here making my next video like, what did I say, cunt?